Hey, let's talk about requirements for running containers in production. First of all, you need a server. This could be a hardware or a virtual server. Then this server needs to run Linux. There are also Windows containers, but let's be honest, the majority of container workloads these days are running on Linux. To run the container on Linux, you need a container manager. That could be Podman, Containerd, Docker, and many others. On top of that, the server that runs containers should be hardened. You need to have the latest security patches applied and you need something like SC Linux to be enabled in enforcing mode. Is there anything else? Or is there the full list of requirements? If we assume that to run containers in production we only need a Linux kernel, a host security mechanism, and a container manager, then we don't really need the complete Linux distribution. What we need instead is a different kind of operating system that is focused entirely on running containerized workloads. We will call such systems container operating systems and they will be the topic of this video. The concept of a container operating system is not new. One of the first popular systems of this kind, called CoreOS, appeared back in 2013. Later, CoreOS company was acquired by Red Hat and one of the results of this acquisition was the release of two different operating systems. First appeared the Red Hat CoreOS, that exists only as a special operating system for OpenShift clusters, without any use cases outside of the OpenShift. But there is also Fedora CoreOS, that has mostly the same features, but is more suitable for general use cases. Amazon Web Services also released their own container operating system called Bottle Rocket. The most Obvious consumer of Bottle Rocket operating system are users of AWS managed container platforms like EKS and ECS. But Amazon made Bottle Rocket an open source product, with the idea being to make it useful even outside of the AWS environments. There were a few other container operating systems out there, but all of them are either deprecated, like Rancher OS, or not yet mature enough. To be fair, even Fedora CoreOS and Bottle Rocket were released only in 2020, so it's also hard to talk about their maturity and stability. Still, there is a clear trend in the container world to move towards specialized, lightweight operating systems that focus only on running containerized workloads. So it makes sense to start investing your attention into this idea. In this video, I'm going to show you Fedora CoreOS. We are going to spin up a test virtual machine and configure it to run a container. I'm going to use the language tool container image and Podman. Check out other videos on our channel on building, scanning and promoting images and using Podman to run them. I will show everything on Amazon Web Services. Don't worry if you're using a different way to spin up your infrastructure, I'm not going to use any AWS specific features in this video. I already prepared a simple Terraform template to provision an EC2 instance. If you never used Terraform before, check out the free Terraform Lighting course available on our channel. Fedora CoreOS is already available on all major cloud providers, so I can simply pull the latest image with the help of the data resource. Then I'm using this image when creating a new instance. Let me apply the template. I'm going to copy the public IP of the new instance and SSH there with the core user. Let me now switch to the root user. The first thing I want to do is to install some packages. The problem is that there is no DNF and no YAM available. So how do we modify the system? Fedora CoreOS uses something called OS3. In simple words, OS3 is a Git-like approach to managing your operating system. Instead of changing your system package per package and file per file, you apply every change as a new file system layer. Every change to the system also requires a reboot. OS3 itself is a platform agnostic toolkit that operating system vendors can integrate with their package managers. That's why there is an RPM OS3 that is similar to standard RPM, but it works with the OS3. OS3 and RPM OS3 are components that make CoreOS immutable and makes features like fully automated patching very easy to implement. Let me try to install TCP dump and see what happens. The output of this command looks very different from your normal DNF install usage. RPM OS3 creates a whole new file system layer and commits it to the file system tree. Our package is still not available for usage and RPM OS3 offers us to perform a reboot. The reason for this is that OS3 creates a new bootable file system 
called a deployment and the only way to switch to it is to reboot the server. We can see the current and future deployments if we run rpmosg status command. At the bottom is our current deployment and at the top there is a new one with TCP dump package layered on top of the previous deployment. Let me do a reboot and log in back to the machine. Now the package is finally available. If you think that this is the most inconvenient way to modify the operating system, you're right. The trick here is that Fedora Core OS was not meant to be used like a normal operating system. You are discouraged from doing any modifications to the system. Instead, for container workloads, you should have immutable infrastructure. If you need to change something, you create a new server from scratch. The only moment when you can change the system is during the first boot. This change is performed with the help of Ignition. If you ever used Cloud Init before, then think of Ignition as a new Cloud Init. If you did not use Cloud Init, then, in simple words, it's the most minimal configuration management system for the cloud native world. Ignition files are not meant to be machine readable. For humans, there is a special human readable format which can be converted to Ignition configuration files with the help of Fedora Core's configuration transpiler, FCCT. Let's try it out. I already prepared the configuration file in advance. Let me copy it here. The first thing we do in this file is create a file called ECR login inside the storage section. ECR login is just a tiny snippet to authenticate the system against the AWS Elastic Container Registry. Then, inside systemd section, there is a systemd service definition. The systemd service logs into the registry, pulls the latest image version, and starts the container with Podman. Fedora Core OS has both Podman and Docker pre-installed as the two most obvious choices for running your containers. Uh, that's the complete system configuration that we need. Now we need to pass this FCCT file to FCCT tool to create an ignition config. Instead of doing it manually, I'm going to create another script that will do it for me automatically and pass the result as the user data to the ECG instance. I first invoke FCCT tool to create an ignition JSON. And then pass it to JQ to generate Terraform compliant JSON output. Now let me open the Terraform template. I need to add a new external data source inside the Terraform to run the script. And finally, I need to change the EC2 instance to use the output of the script as the user data. Let me apply the template and see what happens. I'm logging into the new server. Let's check the status of the container with systemctl status lang tool. Seems like it still pulls the image. Let me tell the lock of the unit. Note that even AWS CLI is running inside the separate container. Fedora Core OS encourages you to run everything in containers instead of installing local packages. Finally, lang tool container is running. And let me leave the server and try to access it from the outside world. We can see a valid output from the LangTool API. As you can see, Fedora Chorus is a bit different from how you would normally manage your container host. It forces immutability and it has only essentials to run your containers. On top of that, it has an automatic updates feature. It can patch itself on a regular basis that would lead to a reboot of the system, of course. Post immutability and automatic updates are especially useful for embedded systems and bare metal machines. They're also handy when you have Kubernetes clusters that you need to maintain and keep configuration sprawl down to zero. Container operating systems are an important addition to the container world. They can significantly simplify the configuration and management of your Kubernetes clusters, as well as open new possibilities for running regular workloads in containers. 
give them a try and if you use them already, tell about your experiences in the comments. That's it for this video. If you or your company need help with adopting containers, Kubernetes or OpenShift training or other topics, reach out to us via the email in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the like button. Thanks for watching.